Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm making a video today because I had the chance to speak at a diabetes support group a couple weeks ago and it was really insightful. I loved it. Honestly, I want to go there again. It was so nice to meet other people who have type one. It was, also, it was type one and type two, but one of the things that came out of that conversation for me was a lot of people, despite being in, this was a support group in a hospital setting, so it's people who, in theory, have access to medical professionals are around a lot of people who they could ask questions to or receive resources from, but for one reason or another, still were quite unaware of a lot of basic tools that are at their disposal that can really help them understand diabetes and some of the decisions that they make. And so I wanted to just put together some really high level resources that have helped me over the couple of years that I've been dealing with type 1. Um, understand things extremely well. And I have a great A1C now. I feel like it's not too much of a burden. Of course, it's annoying from time to time, but I have a good understanding of what I'm doing. And honestly, it's, it's thanks in large part to a lot of these resources. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody who watches these videos has access to all of that stuff too. So I'm gonna put all of the links into the, the video description here. Um, but briefly, I'll just step through a couple of these just so that we can talk through what they are and, and how they were helpful. So let me share my screen real quick. Okay, you should be seeing my screen now. Okay, so let's start with uh, the Juice Box podcast. This is one that I think a lot of people have heard of, but again, in the group that I was speaking at, nobody had heard of this. And I find this, this resource, when I was first diagnosed, this taught me everything I need to know. There's over like a thousand episodes and some of it's just community-based. Like, you know, the host will be talking to somebody who has type one diabetes or is a caregiver of somebody with type one and talking about the experience. But then there's also episodes that are very technical and very related to getting your settings right or things that you need to look out for in your method of managing, whether it's MDI or pumping or, or whatever else. So a couple of things to note in particular. So this is the Juice Box podcast. You can get this on this website and I'll put the, the link to the website here, but it's much easier to listen to it on the app on the phone, whether you have an Apple or an iPhone. So you'll search the Juice Box podcast. Now, at least in Apple, as far as I'm aware of it, you can't really look for particular playlists within that podcast. So with this podcast, you would wanna start with, I think uh, the Diabetes Pro Tip series. Um, so the link that I have here jumps you right, right to that. So if you're listening to it on your phone, you can just start listening right here. But if you're on your, um, if you're using the app, you want to scroll down, scroll down to episode 1000 is where these will start. Um, the thing to note is that these were created a few years ago. I think these are remastered. So the original ones were from, I don't know if it's three or four, or maybe even five years ago. So when you're listening, and they're talking about things like basal rates or some of the technology that's available, understand that that stuff may be, the, the information is still accurate and good, but your system may not rely on that. For example, if they're talking about basal rates and how to set a perfect basal rate and you're using an Omnipod 5, that is kind of irrelevant because you're not using the basal rate if you're using the automated mode in the Omnipod 5. Um, it's still good to understand how a basal rate works and to set that up properly for when you're in manual mode, but just take that with a grain of salt. Uh, it's just the information, particularly the information about insulin, the information about how to pre-bolus, it's so helpful. Um, I can't recommend it enough. This taught me just an unbelievable amount of information about diabetes when I was first diagnosed. Because again, you can see here, even these are shorter episodes, but these are 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 45 minutes. It's just more data. Um, when you're at your doctor or your educator, you don't have that kind of time. And so being able to just sit while you work or just doing whatever you want to do with this playing in the background, I think it's a complete game changer. So the first one is this diabetes pro tip. Um, the second playlist for the Omnipod or for the juice box series is an Omnipod specific mini series. This again is, it's not outdated now, but I think as people have learned more about the Omnipod 5, there's, there's more tips and tricks out there. But when it was first launched, they created a three-part mini-series specific to the Omnipod 5. Um, and again, if you click on the link that will be in the notes of the video, you can jump directly to these and listen to them in your browser. Um, if you're on your phone, though, like on the app, you'll want to scroll down to, you can see it's episode starting in the 700s. So go to 736, and then you'll be able to listen to these. Um, 
I found these helpful because there was a lot of things that annoyed me with the Omnipod 5 at, at first. Um, this gave me some more context in terms of what to expect. And now I have a very good understanding of how it works. And again, there's been more information that's come out since then, but this is a great place to start if you're looking for more about um, Omnipod 5 specific management. Okay, so then I wanna talk about just a few, um, let's look at some YouTube channels. Um, so this is a really good one. Um, this guy is a character. I crack up at a lot of his videos, but he's got great information. Um, it's sort of just, I don't necessarily, I've gotten much more of my, like my foundational knowledge from the juice box podcast, just from the way that it's structured. However, this channel has great information on specific topics and it's done in an interesting, engaging way. So, you know, some of this stuff is a little gimmicky. Like I'm not looking for hacks really. I'm looking for more just like foundational information. But if you take it with a grain of salt and you sort of just listen to what's being said and you process it within the context of what you're already doing, I think it's some really good information. This guy has type one. He tries a lot of different things, a lot of different technologies, a lot of different diets, and exercise routines. And so it can just give you a lot more information. And for me personally, it's nice to see somebody who's experienced with the condition, clearly knows a lot about it and just puts out a lot of content. Um, this is a great, great resource. Um, so yeah, I would definitely check out this channel called Type 1 Talks. This is going to be in the links. Now, more recently, I've come across this channel, Diabetic. Um, I really love this channel. Uh, this guy has type 1. He's recently diagnosed kind of like myself, but his focus is more on the technology around type 1 diabetes. It's, it's more than that, but a lot of it, which makes it unique and cool, is going into like some really high tech and sort of ways to utilize technology within type one diabetes to make it a little bit easier to manage, uh, along with reviews of new technology and stuff that's coming down the pike in terms of research and things like that. Uh, for example, you know, you can see this one here that I'm hovering over. So just a video about how to get your glucose readings on your dashboard. Something like that is not something that you would really be exposed to otherwise. So I find this really, really beneficial. Um, this is a great episode about uh, avoiding CGM fatigue because I think it is something that a lot of us can come, uh, can you know understand and relate to, um, and just a good guy too. I, I really like this channel. There's a, kind of an associated video and audio podcast along with the YouTube channel, so another one to check out. Bookmark for the future. Um, now, one that's a little bit more personal to me is this website called Diabetes Sangha. So when I was first diagnosed, I got connected through some sort of a grapevine with the people who run this organization um, because I am a web developer as one of my jobs. And so I was originally helping this group um, update and maintain their website. Uh, so what it is, is a group of people that have type one diabetes who understand and, and promote the benefits of meditation to help deal with all of the stresses associated with a life with diabetes. Uh, it's a great group of people. It's incredibly nice. It's totally free. And what they do is they offer recurring online free um, Zoom link uh, or Zoom based uh, meditations. There's like multiple weeks and they have different uh, themes. Um, there are some paid courses, but you really, you never have to attend those. So all, all of the main ones are completely free. Um, they have a pretty good events like schedule coming up. So this would show like the month of events that are happening. So if you were interested in any of these, you could sign up and just join the Zoom right at the time and the date that they talk about. You get to know the group of people that you go to and you know the meditation is wonderful in and of itself, but the beginning and the end of each session has uh, just like a, a conversation talking about how things are going or what you've been dealing with or if anybody wants to share something in particular, they can. And it's just a great space to come and after a stressful day or especially when you're dealing with something on your own, to have this group of other people who you can you know, connect with and who understand what you're going through is really beneficial. Um, and I think occasionally they do some, some live meetups too. They're more in like the, they're mostly based in the New York area, um, but they do do events and they go to events all over the place. And if you get plugged into some of the, the other podcasts and just like content that's being produced from type one, you'll probably start to recognize some of the names that you see in some of these things. So a really, 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 really beneficial resource that I would love everybody to connect with. And I know that the people who run this organization would just, they would openly welcome anybody new within type one that was, we're also caregivers and family members of people in type one to be involved with this. So just feel free to check this out if you're interested. Okay, um, 
Gluco is another tool that I've talked about in the past. Now, most people who have type one probably already have an account with Gluco because it's one of those things that you set up with your doctor when you first get diagnosed. It sort of goes hand in hand with uh, with either Dexcom or Tandem uh, or uh, Freestyle to have like another place for your data to live. It's a great resource to get familiar with in terms of like looking at your trends. It's it's a little bit more, it shows more of the insulin side of things than just your Dexcom does, which your Dexcom is amazing for showing your blood sugar and your, you know, your average standard deviations and things like that. But this is also going to show you how much insulin you took when it's basically looking at your pump. So it's, it's understanding, um, you know, when insulin was given, when it was taken away, what your basal rate was, or how much insulin you got on a daily basis. And so really, really helpful thing to get familiar with and to look at for your own knowledge, because this is a lot of times what your doctor is going to be looking at. Dexcom, I think most people know about. This is what I use. So I didn't really put a link for freestyle or anything like that, just because I'm not as familiar with that stuff. But um, a couple of things of note to understand about the Dexcom thing, most importantly, is that you can get free replacements if something goes wrong by using the support feature. Uh, at least for, I have the G6. I know it's a little bit easier to get sensor replacements with the G6. I'm not sure about the G7, but I do think they're pretty good about it. And so uh, if you have um, issues with your sensor breaking or inaccurate readings or falls off or something like that, you can come to their support section. You can do a support request and you can actually, you don't even have to interact with the human. You can just put all your info in right here. You can request that they contact you via email and they will just ship you out a new sensor in this case for the G6 for me. So I do it fairly regularly when something goes wrong and they're great about it. So important thing to be aware of because it can really stink if you know, your insurance doesn't give you replacements and you do need them. So beneficial uh, thing to be familiar with here. Um, the other one that I use on a daily basis, which is incredibly helpful for me, is this thing called Sugar Pixel. So this is a paid product, it's hundred bucks, but it's this device here. And it's basically just plugged into your, your Dexcom or plugged into your Dexcom readings. And it's gonna show you in real time uh, via that sort of a display where you're at. Um, there's a variety of different display mechanisms that you can show. You can do numbers like it has here. You can do uh, little dots. You can do emojis. Um, there's different brightness levels so that you can put it next to your bed, for example, and, and turn down the brightness if it's distracting you a little bit. Um, but I think two things of note in the screen that are incredibly helpful for me. One is this thing here, which is called Delta. So how much up, down, or straight did this reading differ from the last one? that can give you a feel for, let's say it's going down and you're about to go to sleep, like I'm gonna take some glucose tablets. Incredibly helpful. Uh, the other thing here is this, this little dashed line. This is sort of representative of the five minute increments between your Dexcom readings. And so in this case, you would know that you had one, two, so you've got three more to go before you're gonna get the next reading. And so, you know, a lot of times if I'm just sort of looking over as I'm in a meeting or something like that, and I see it's at five, I know that I'm very, in a, in a second or two, I'm going to get that next reading. And so then I can make my treatment decisions accordingly. Uh, I think this thing, it, it seems so simple, but having it here as opposed to needing to look on my phone or open up my watch or whatever, especially at night, I think this thing is just amazing. So I wanted to make sure that everybody was familiar with that as well. Um, the last one, this is not something that like I have any, you know, professional relationship with or I get paid to talk about or anything like that. But I have also spoken with this group here, which I, at the beginning of my diagnosis, along with um, Juicebox podcast was amazing. Uh, so my, my individual uh, endocrinologist and educator within my hospital system was not giving me the information that I needed or wanted when I was first diagnosed. And so through the Juicebox podcast, you know, because they have Actually, one of their one of the recurring guests, Jenny Smith, on that show, is an educator with this company, and this guy right here is one of like the most well known uh, diabetes educators authors out there, Gary um, Gary Schneider. So he owns this company, and then he has a bunch of diabetes educators, including Jenny Smith, that work for him. And you can basically, if you have the means to do so, you can just pay straight up. They don't really go through insurance. I think they do. Uh, I think they'll write up like a, whatever it's called, a receipt or a reimbursement form that you can potentially submit to insurance. But um, if you can't, it's still, I mean, I guess it's all relative, but it's relatively affordable in the, in the uh, basically when you compare it to how important the information that you get is. 
So I worked with, who did I work with? I worked with Catherine and she was amazing. Um, so I was on this, it was like a retainer program. I think I worked with her for maybe three or six months and it was like one virtual visit per month in which we would look at all of my information and she would give me suggestions on what to change, what I need to worry more about, what I need to worry less about. And just, again, she has type one. Everybody that works here has type one. So the information that you get is just so helpful, so accurate. It's so nice to talk to somebody who's so comfortable with all of these things. And so she really, really helped me with my settings when I first got started too. Um, so I wanted to make sure that this resource was known by everybody who watches these videos because it doesn't matter where you live. You know, this is online. Um, they're based near Philly, but this is an online company. And so if you were in a place that you feel like you're not getting the information from your healthcare professionals that you want or that you need to, in order to manage your diabetes the way that you would like, I can't recommend this place enough. You know, you reach out to them. You could set up, like I said, a couple of uh, visits over the course of a series of months. You really don't need more than that if you kind of come up with a good plan. Um, I think I think when I did it, I think it was like a, like I said, it was a three or a six month retainer for about $500 total. And so that might seem like a lot and it was a lot, but the investment saved me countless hours of not having headaches because I didn't know what I was supposed to change. Um, it kept my blood sugar in a really good range. And I feel, you know, really knowledgeable and comfortable with type one diabetes as a result of this and the other resources. So uh, those are the main things that I wanted to cover um, for now. Um, I don't think there's anything else that I missed, um, but yeah, if, uh, if I if I think of anything else, I will be sure to put it in the comments. I'll do another video if that's the case too, but I hope this is helpful and uh, talk to you all soon.